What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the top five best pistols under $300. Through the years of testing firearms, I have been lucky enough to get my hands on just about every major brand of pistol, and a lot of the minor ones as well. So I kind of have a, an accumulation of knowledge on pistols that most other people just simply don't get to experience. On top of that, compared to other gun reviewers, I have a tendency to shoot a little bit more and test the guns a little bit more. I often put a thousand rounds through each one of the pistols that I review on this channel. Out of all of that shooting, all of that testing and all of that research, I've come up with this particular list of the best guns, at least in my opinion, under $300. Some of the standards that these guns are gonna have to meet in order to get on this list, being reliable and accurate, even more so being more reliable and more accurate than other guns for the same price. Lightweight, easy to use for beginners, need to be available and ready for sale. Nothing that is made in like 1920 and only 10 are actually in existence. They need to be popular enough to be able to be found. Obviously they need to be under $300. However, a couple of these might be at the 300 or even a little bit over. All these firearms were purchased for under $300. However, that was in fact before the toilet paper apocalypse. And lastly, the pistols all have to be capable of defending your home in person. So they have to have the ability to flex between concealed cameras and home defense and be good at all the roles you might put a handgun into even something like target shooting because if a gun is fun to shoot you're going to use it more and you'll be more capable with it if you ever actually had to use it for real and again this is just one in a series of videos we're going to be doing over the next couple of months to try to help new shooters and uh, new gun owners i'll even have a couple of videos coming up in the near future with mrs outlaw interested in that uh, feel free to subscribe now before we get into the video i want to mention my patron supporters thank you guys very much because of you the channel still exists you get access to a lot of things like patron only content and if you ever want to send me a message i answer all of my patron direct messages so if you have any gun questions feel free to hit me on patron and find Finally, there's a link in the description along with the patron link to a local homeless shelter that I really like to support and times are rough out there these days and those people could use your support more than ever so even before becoming a patron supporter I'd really appreciate it if you went down there and donate to those kids now we'll get into number five here and for the number five spot I did choose the Stoger STR9 now the Stoger is a relatively new gun uh, it came out in the last couple of years and it kind of flew under the radar which I'm a little bit surprised about it is a polymer frame striker fired nine millimeter get used to that. Some versions come with different features and different accessories. The Stoger can kind of be purchased a la carte, so you can get them with less or more magazines, with less or more back straps. You can also get them optics ready, so you have the ability to put an optic on it right out of the box without having to send it in to be milled, which is something that not a lot of pistols under $300 are going to have, so that's a really cool feature. As I said, they're 9 millimeter, come with 3 dot sights. They have an integrated rail for mounting accessories, which is pretty nice. If you want to throw a light on it for home defense or something like like that or a laser if you're into that kind of thing it also comes with uh like i said one to three magazines they have a 15 round double stack nine millimeter magazine it has a four inch barrel and 30 ounce overall weight making it a little heavier than some of the other guns on this list but still more than manageable uh weight can is not necessarily a good or bad thing less weight helps you carry it easier but more weight helps you shoot it easier so that's a good rule of thumb it has pretty good sights and trigger, making accuracy relatively easy. It's got front slide serrations, a good trigger undercut, really good texture, and it's got Glock style takedown with a swappable magazine release in case you are a lefty. Now, as far as reliability goes in this gun, it's pretty excellent. I have 800 rounds through it currently with two failures. That is not perfect but pretty good considering the gun that I purchased was $200 out the door at my local Shields. Now again, that was before all of the drama happened. In reality, it's probably gonna be somewhere around 250. So it's accurate, reliable, but the real plus as far as the Stoger goes is that it's very shootable. But again, the reason why it's at number five, other than being a gun that isn't made in the United States, is the fact that it has some minor reliability issues. Now, you're not always going to have that with every relatively affordable gun. You're going to have many, many, many that work great and a few that don't because one of the things that you lose with a relatively cheap gun is quality control. So you're going to have, let's say, if Glock had 99.9% .9 reliability as far as models go, with a Stoger, you're probably looking at 997 Now we'll get into number four, and number four is gonna be the Canik TP9 
basically the Canon TP9 series, but I'm going to choose the Elite SC. Now, the Elite SC is probably the most expensive gun on the list, and I got it for uh, like $305 or something like that out the door, but nowadays you're looking at something like $350, which is why I kind of gave the uh, a disclaimer at the beginning of the video. It was for this gun. However, it is kind of a little bit of a cheat because you can get TP9s, especially the full-size versions, for $250 to $300. So most of the Canics do come under $300. Now, I like the SC model because it is the subcompact, and it does, in my opinion, hit a whole lot of boxes. It is a polymer frame striker-fired pistol, 9mm. It comes with two magazines, 12-round, and a 15-round magazine. But if you're in one of those weirdo states, you can get 10-round magazines. If that's all you can get, they are available. This gun also comes optics ready, which is pretty awesome, and it comes with tons of different mounting plates. One of the reasons why this gun made the list is because it has the most features of any gun I've ever seen at the $300 price point. I mean, it's gonna sound like an infomercial, but bear with me here. It's got a tungsten Cerakote 50-50 uh, on it, so it looks very cool. It's got a dual tone look with a red trigger safety. It makes it look really slick. It's got front slide serrations, an amazing trigger, good texture. It has Warren Tactical front fiber optic sight with a blacked out rear that has a tactical notch to run it off your belt or big toe. Back straps, comes with a holster and even a loaded chamber indicator. Not to mention it has ambi controls, so all you lefties are gonna be good to go there as well. The gun is a really good size in my opinion. Traditionally, subcompacts seem to get overlooked for some reason. However, at this diminutive size and weight, uh, having a 15 round magazine capacity is extremely impressive. It could easily flex from concealed carry into home defense. And with that pick rail, it could easily take a weapon light as well. That being said, it's not all cupcakes and rainbows. It's number four on the list because it also has a little bit questionable reliability in comparison to the one through three. Out of the thousand rounds I shot the Canic SC, it had about two failures. Now, out of all the other Canics, you can kind of expect a similar result. Very, very reliable. However, with certain ammo and certain issues, it will have the occasional bobble. Now, the Canic is made in Turkey, and they are made for 124 grain NATO standard ammunition and sometimes the recoil springs don't really uh, work well with standard American style 115 grain target ammunition like Fiocchi or American Eagle or Winchester White Box. If you use that traditional standard ammunition, which most people do including myself, you can have some issues and you can go get a different recoil spring if you want to. You can cut a couple of links off the recoil spring or you could just simply leave the gun depressed for several months and usually that problem works itself out. So overall I wouldn't consider the reliability a very big deal considering it can be easily overcome and for a gun with this many features and it's simply as accurate as the gun is it's an extremely good buy in my personal opinion uh, even though it's a subcompact the canics really come with an exceptional trigger by comparison to almost every other gun on the market not to mention the really good sight so it makes accuracy very very easy you really don't have to pay all that much to get an extremely effective handgun Number three, we're going to go with a subcompact single stack to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to go with the M&P Shield. Now, you can go with the Gen 1, which is going to be a little bit cheaper. You can go with the Gen 2, the 2.0, which is going to be a better gun, but it's also going to be a little bit more expensive. Both you can find for under $300. Now, they're polymer frame striker-fired pistols as well, 9mm, but you're going to get a 3-inch barrel. The gun's going to be a little bit smaller and more geared toward concealed carry. It's going to be 20 ounces, extremely lightweight. You barely got to notice it's there. With a 7 plus 1 mag magazine capacity. However, magazines are available aftermarket that have a significantly higher capacity if you look around a little bit. Comes with pretty good sights as well. The 2.0 has a better trigger than the Gen 1, but they both have a very acceptable trigger. Also has extremely good texture, and in my opinion, that's what makes it worth it. The primary use for this is home defense, but the shield is just big enough and a little bit larger than your average subcompact single stack that it can flex into a home defense role or a new beginner pistol very easily. One of the biggest mistakes beginners make when they're buying a firearm is they go for a pistol that feels good in their hand and generally if you're a smaller person or if you're new to firearms you think a smaller pistol is going to work better however smaller pistols are generally a little bit harder to shoot so the bigger you can go that is acceptable for carry is usually your best bet the m p is available with or without a thumb safety has really good ergonomics is really easy to use just point and click and it is extremely reliable out of all of 
the single stack subcompacts, I would put the Shield toe to toe with any other for reliability. And on top of that, they also happen to be very accurate. Now, in my testing of the MP Shield 2.0, I was able to make hits relatively easily at up to 100 yards. And for a three inch pistol, that is very impressive. Now, Another advantage that you're going to get to the M&P Shield, since it's been out for quite a while, is going to be aftermarket support. With all of these guns that you see on this list, some of the things that you're going to have to buy, if they don't come with them, are going to be a holster and several extra magazines. I recommend four magazines at least for each firearm. Magazines are not permanent and they don't last forever, and they have to be switched out more than the gun. They also need maintenance. So I like to have a few extra magazines, and magazines for the Shield are not only cheap, but they are a very available at almost every gun store. On top of that, holsters are also available at almost every gun store or even online for the M&P Shields. All the aftermarket accessories that you would need to start off concealed carry or home defense will be really easy to find and usually a one-stop shop. Now at number two, I'm going to go with the Taurus G2C or the Taurus G3. We're gonna mainly talk about the Taurus G3 here, but imagine they're very similar guns. The G3 just has a slightly longer barrel. And in my opinion, no questions asked, the G3 G2C series is the best budget gun. It's extremely reliable, extremely durable, and has really good ergonomics. Polymer frame striker fired pistol, just like all the other guns on this list, it comes with two magazines, 115 and 117 round magazine. But again, if you live in California or something like that, 10 round magazines are available. It has a four inch barrel and it has a 24 ounce overall weight, making it a very good size and weight for a do it all gun. If you're looking for a gun, under $250 that is brand new that you can use for concealed carry, home defense, target shooting, plinking, whatever. This is a really, really good option. The Taurus G3 that I purchased, I got for $219, making it pretty impressive. You're not gonna be able to find those everywhere, but if you look around a little bit, you're gonna be able to find some really good deals. Now, along with all that, the Taurus G3 does come with a Picatinny rail, a really good trigger, a really good magazine release, good texture, your front slide serrations and aftermarket are available, including magazine base pads. Uh, I have aftermarket fiber optic sights on mine and holsters are also pretty easy to find. However, not gonna be as easy as something like the Shield. It also has a manual safety, but if you don't like that, it's easily avoided. It has a Glock style takedown. And for beginners, that is really good. One of the things you're gonna have to learn how to do with your new pistol is going to be clean and maintain it, at the very least lubricate it on occasion Overall, if you're looking for a new gun, the Taurus G3 is just about the best possible choice that you can get for under $250. Now, before we get into number one, I'm going to list a couple of honorable mentions, and I can't list them all, guys. There's so many great budget guns out there, but I'll just hit some of the high points. Ha, ha, ha. Number one is going to be the high point. Number two, Walter Creed, Smith & Wesson SD9VE, and, of course, the Ruger American. Now at number one, uh, it's a little bit of a cheat, but there's no way it really couldn't be. Gen 1 M&Ps and Gen 3 Glock 17s. Glock 19s that you can get at any pawn shop or any sporting goods store under $300 relatively easily. A, you're gonna get a used pistol. And let's talk about used pistols for a second. Everybody says don't buy a used gun, which I'm always surprised about because nobody has a problem buying a used car. If they're a quality product, it's the same concept. I mean, you need to know a little bit about used guns if you're buying something like a 1911 or an M1 carbine or maybe an 1873. In the same token, you would need some car knowledge if you were buying a 67 Corvette. However, it's not necessary if you're buying a 2004 Honda Civic or maybe a Volvo 850. That's where the Glock or the M&P come in. The parts breakages are not really an issue and guns like the Gen 3 Glock, for example, can take somewhere between 10 and 50,000 rounds before they have any real issues. That's not an over-exaggeration. You can find several articles online where people have shot 50,000 rounds through Gen 3 and had no problem whatsoever. On top of that extreme reliability and durability, you also get an amazing track record. You're not gonna have any of those quality control issues or at least a lot 
less of them than you will with some of the other guns below on this list with the M&P or the Glock. They're the most tested guns on the market. You get reliability, you're gonna get track record, you're going to get durability, long-term durability. On top of that, you're gonna get the best aftermarket support of any firearm. The Glock Gen 3 especially, or any of the Glock series and the M&P series, aftermarket accessories like magazines and holsters are not only going to be available and easy to find, but they're gonna be so cheap and so plentiful that your biggest problem is, is going to be choosing which one you actually want. The Glock Gen 3, for example, is again another polymer frame striker fired pistol, and so is the M&P. They have no safeties unless you really want them, in which case some of the M&Ps come with safeties, but they're easy to take off uh, even if you get one and don't want it. Both of them come in either compact or full size. I would honestly suggest a full size pistol. It's a little bit easier to shoot. You get somewhere between a 15 and 17 round magazine capacity and either gun comes with three magazines traditionally. So overall, I just don't think you can beat it as far as track record, reliability, durability. If I had all these guns on the table and the chips were down and I had to pick one right away, I would no questions asked pick up a used Gen 3 Glock. It's what I cut my teeth on. It's easy to use it's very reliable very durable magazines everything is going to be available parts and magazines especially for the Glock 17 are going to be all over the place so it's a gun that will last you forever and if it ever did break it's so easy to fix it'll make your head spin if you like my choices let me know in the comment section if you didn't like my choices feel free to put your own list down there as well It'll be interesting to see what all of you guys pick if you like this video please like and subscribe please support your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle I'll check you later. You have a backup weapon? Never had the need. Get one. Keep that in your suit unless I tell you to take it out. Get yourself a Glock. Lose that nickel-plated sissy pistol.